Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to film for you my April beauty favourites. So grab yourself a cup up, put your feet up and just keep watching. Okay, in no particular order, I'm going to start off with the product that's on my lips today. It's the NARS Audacious Lipstick in the shade Anna. And you could call this an impulse buy spurred on by Jaclyn Hill. She mentioned this in a couple of her videos and to be honest with you, I wasn't sure if it was a colour that would suit me. And it's very much one of those lipstick shades that would look different depending on who it was on. And a lot of the swatches I saw, it came off quite pink, quite light, not too pale, but quite like a baby pink, I would say. But the way Jacqueline Hill described it, she said it was more of a like a mauvey pink. And I would definitely agree with that. And I think that's the reason why I purchased it. And it was just one of those kind of spur of the moment, bought on a whim type thing. And I have to say, I am totally in love with this shade. And I mean, like I said, it is kind of like a light pink shade, but it's got that kind of mauvey, plummy undertone to it, which is why I probably like it, because a shade like this, sometimes I do find it difficult to wear because my lips are quite pigmented. And a lot of the times, pale pink shades I would have to wear with maybe a slightly darker lip liner underneath it just to kind of make it a bit more wearable and to not make my complexion look too washed out. If you've never tried the NARS Audacious lipsticks before then you need to get your skates on because the formulation of these lipsticks are just absolutely fantastic. It's a lipstick that goes on really really pigmented, I mean the colour payoff is outstanding and it glides on really, really smooth, there's no drag, and it gives off like a semi-matte finish. There's a definite slight sheen to the lipstick, so I think that makes it a bit more comfortable to wear, and I mean, on your lips, it just feels really, really creamy, and I think NARS did really, really well, and they've got such a massive range of colors as well. Definitely one to check out if you haven't done so already. Next up, I've just recently discovered the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. Now, this has been on the scene for a little while now, and I've been using my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer for the longest time, and for me, it's, a great all-round concealer. It's really creamy and easy to blend and it's got great coverage as well. And I like the fact that you can use it kind of under the eyes as well as over blemishes. And I think that this is a very, very good dupe for it. Now, I have the shade Custard in the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and in the Fit Me Concealer I have the shade 20 I think it's 20 Sand but these two are near enough identical I mean, look at that and the formulation is very very similar as well I mean, the Fit Me is really really creamy and I've been wearing it kind of both under my eyes as well as kind of covering up any redness, especially around my nose and over any blemishes and the coverage is there. But yeah, I've been really enjoying that. And funnily enough, the other favorite of the month is also another Maybelline concealer. This one's the Instant Anti-Age the Razor Eye Concealer. Now this one is a bit more different to the Fit Me Concealer in the sense that the texture is a lot more light and you get less coverage with this concealer, I feel. I think it's a great one for those who like a more thin formulation, especially under the eye area. Because I know a lot of people are concerned about, you know, concealer creasing under the eyes and with this, I don't think you can go wrong. I feel like it doesn't have the coverage, but if you don't suffer from kind of really dark under circle eyes, then I think, you know, this is, this is a great option for you. I find it incredibly easy to blend. I mean, it comes with a, funny sponge tipped applicator um, and you just kind of twist it so it dispenses a product and then you kind of blend it in with the uh, sponge tip although sometimes I just go in with a brush at all my fingers um, but yeah this one I got it in the shade I think it's a shade light oh I can't really see it anywhere Yes, it's the shade light. It gives that really nice kind of brightening effect under the eyes that kind of makes you look really nice and wide awake. 
and for like no makeup makeup days I think this is perfect because it's so thin and so light it just barely registers on the face but it gives that kind of little bit of coverage that you might need but don't expect a lot of coverage with it and how I've been using this is using it after I've gone in with my Bobbi Brown Peach Corrector so I don't apply that like directly to the kind of darker bits under my eyes and then I go in with this to kind of help brighten it up and this is also great for kind of highlighting the face as well because it gives that really natural brightening effect so I'd apply it to like the centre of my forehead also down in the centre of my nose and just on my chin as well and yeah I really like this and I recently picked these two up from Essie and the colours are Angora Cardi and In Stitches and I was kind of looking for some new shades you know every once in a while you kind of feel like you need to update your nail wardrobe Essie in terms of their formula it's alright I mean it's not the longest lasting but it's not one of those types that kind of chips after a day of wear but um, I was really drawn to these two shades. Actually, I picked up another shade, which is the one I've got on my nails today, but it's a bit more kind of a darker, muted, plummy grey. But these are the colours that I've been wearing the most this month, and they're not that too dissimilar. I mean, this one's a couple of shades more darker, and it's probably got a little bit more plum than this one. And this one's kind of a bit more a muted, darker peach. This one I think is great for spring because it's a bit more perky but it's not so kind of bright and in your face. And the bright in your face ones I like to kind of reserve for some like the bright kind of reds and the corals and the fluorescent pinks for example. And this one I mean I love kind of muted rosy tones and muted plums. Anything muted I'm like a big fan of so um, yeah I love this colour but I've been kind of alternating between the two. And another one of my favourite nail polishes of the month is not a colour varnish, uh, it's actually the Sesh Vite Dry Fast Top Coat. And I normally use this religiously, but uh, a few months ago I actually ran out, you know when it goes a bit gloopy at the bottom and you can no longer use it. I kind of thought it was time I tried something else and kind of ventured out of my comfort zone and I ended up using the I think it's the top coat from Formula X um, which doesn't claim to be fast drying and isn't fast drying at all which I end up picking it's like a fast dry spray from I think it's Mavala I remember correctly um, and what you do is you wait at least I think a minute after you've painted your nails and you kind of spray it at a distance I mean, it did dry my nails fast, but not as fast as this. So I decided to repurchase this, and I don't know why I strayed from it in the first place because this is guaranteed fast nails, especially when you're in a rush. Okay, my next two favourites for the month. Um, one which I have been using for the past couple of months, and one I kind of just got this month, but I kind of love them both. And the first one is the NARS Kabuki Eye Brush, I think it's called. And I got this as part of their holiday brush gift set. So it came with um, a flat top Kabuki and also uh, a brush similar shape to this, but much bigger. So I kind of use that for bronzing. Um, but this is just a really nice, thick, fluffy brush and I like to use this as a blender not one to kind of blend into the crease but like an after step so you kind of go in after each step of your eyeshadow and just kind of blend out the edges so that you've got that kind of seamless effect and I think this is great for it because it's just so big and so fluffy and I recently picked up the Sigma E40 this is influenced by many YouTubers who swear by this as a blending brush. Now, when I bought it, and then when I got it, it's not what I expected to be, because on video, it actually looks kind of similar to this brush, I think. it. I thought it was a lot more fatter and fuller. But this is a lot more tapered, but it's still very, it's not really dense. It's very kind of fluffy, 
um, and for that reason it blends incredibly well and I definitely think that this one is great for those who have very little lid space like myself um, it's not kind of too big that it takes up your entire eye but it kind of does allow for kind of precision blending as well and it is so incredibly soft it's definitely more softer than the NARS one and I know NARS brushes are not, not cheap at all but the Sigma one is really really soft and it's kind of relaxing when you're kind of blending away and I just find it just so kind of easy to manage in a way this is definitely a highly recommended brush it's kind of somewhere between budget and high end it sort of sits somewhere in the middle I think it's around about 11 or 12 pounds I picked up and my next favourite is the MAC Prep and Prime Highlighter and this is in the shade Light Boost and this comes in Light Boost which is the yellow tone one and Radiant, Radiant Rose or something like that and that's the more kind of peach tone one but this is a great highlighter it's a very very pale yellow shade so see that but it's a very pale yellow shade and I think it's great for kind of my sort of complexion and it's one of those shades I think that is kind of universally kind of flattering because once it's blended out it really does kind of give that kind of light brightening effect and because the formulation is so thin as well it's really easy to work with and really easy to blend and I've been kind of using it loads instead of my concealer for highlighting and I find that this is actually more brightening so I tend to just go in and just literally draw in the lines or kind of dot it underneath my eyes and then I go in with a damp beauty blender and just kind of tap tap blend and, and then yeah voila I have a nice bright natural looking highlight then my last favourite for the month, I feel like I've been talking for the longest time, I need a drink now, but it's the Too Faced Natural Matte Eye Palette. Now you might have seen me feature this in, is it this week's blog post that went out? I think it might have been this week's post that went out, but I am totally in love with this. It's a palette that contains only matte shades, which is great because I think mattes are really, really versatile and really, really practical. But it's got like a mixture of like warm and cool tones. So um, I definitely prefer more of the warmer tones. Um, so I really appreciate the shades like Honey Butter and Chocolate Cookie. Honey Butter is kind of a warm mid-tone peach, whereas Chocolate Cookie is a mid-tone brown. And then you've got Strapless, which is one of my favourite from this shade. And it's another kind of dusky rose. Same with the nail polish. I kind of love this sort of shade. Anything that has a kind of rosy, plummy undertone, I love because it kind of, it's great for brown eyes. It really emphasizes brown eyes and it adds that really nice kind of wash of warmth to your eyes without having to kind of go with browns and beiges and creams, which, you know, they're, they're your rock standard neutrals. So I really appreciate like these types of colors in the palette because it just creates a little bit more interest to a neutral palette and yeah I just think it's an all-round great palette and it also has a um, guide just like all their kind of palettes um, to give you ideas on how to create looks using these palettes and then obviously you've got your eye looks already set out for you so you've got this obviously your light kind of wash over the lids and highlight shade, you've got your transition shades and then you've got your kind of crease and smoking out shades. You, you've got your look all there and obviously if you're feeling more adventurous you can just mix and match all the colours up so yeah I have absolutely been loving this. And I think that is all for my um, April beauty favourites so um, if you've stuck around to watch this whole video then thank you very much and if you've enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and uh, it'll just help people find my videos and subscribe if you haven't done so already I would really really appreciate that and I guess have a great week I'll see you next time this is an all matte palette and it's a very much a neutral tone palette but it's got a little bit of like pinky plummy shades and also kind of